Hi, Bill. Thanks uh, for being here. Thanks for having me. This is fantastic. So tell us, how has Arden been able to achieve a leadership position in the Go and infrastructure communities? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we really got involved in Go 2013 when we had this need to move from Windows to Linux. And it was a, a moment there when I was like, I'm finally in another, because this doesn't happen very often, right? You get to get in the beginning of a tech. And I was like, I'm gonna take this opportunity to start blogging. I'm gonna start blogging my experiences about learning this new language and an operating system for sure too, right? It's like starting completely from scratch. And I'm like, I can't be the only one on the planet starting from scratch here. So I started blogging with the idea in mind that um, I knew nothing and somebody else would know nothing. Because how many times you read a blog post where it already assumes a, a large amount of, of knowledge? So I started doing that kind of blogging and I, and I think it started resonating with a lot of people who were learning Go at the same time. At, at the time, Go was kind of split between the academics who were really jumping on early and then developers like me who really weren't academics, we were just trying to get work done. Um, and that blogging began to resonate with people and that ended up turning into a book and that turned into training. And I think it's the training at the end of the day, our ability to be able to train developers from, from the academics to the ones that are just trying to do it as a day job. Um, I think it, it, it gave us that, kind of maybe elevated us in the community to say, hey, you know what, this, this training is helping everyone here. So I, I think at the end of the day it became the training and then that obviously ends up allowing us to, to show people that we're, we're good engineers too. And speaking of that training, um, what made you add Kubernetes training to your offering of consulting? Because it's in demand right now, right? Like people are asking for it over and over again. And, and I'm not the Kubernetes expert. Like I, I know software development and Go development inside and out. So we found leaders in the Go community. You know, Jerome P, I won't even try to say his last name. I call him Jerome P. Uh, Jerome P, who came originally from Docker and has been doing Kubernetes training for the last few years. We brought in Jerome and, and other people who really have already, they have respect in terms of that. So we were like, we wanna keep the Arden brand really, really solid. So we're very particular on who we work with. So the demand is there. And um, I find it interesting, even on the Go training, like at some point either enough people know this stuff where they don't need it, or it kind of fades a little bit in the background. And for me, I think at some point, that's what's gonna to happen to Kubernetes. There's gonna be a whole nother layer on top and Kubernetes is gonna be like what we consider Linux today, right? Just it's there, we might have to touch it every once in a while. And that's really what I'm gonna, it's kind of what I'm looking at over the next five years. When does that transition happen? But it's just the demand. I think everybody has, for better or worse, sometimes you don't understand why, has kind of just bought into the Kubernetes uh, orchestration system. And, and this, is, this is where we're at. Okay, and what uh, do you think differentiates Arden from its competitors? I think what's differentiating us right now is the quality of everything that we do, the quality of everything we publish, and the community-oriented aspects of it too. I don't just publish things on a whim. I'm always asking the community to, hey, can you review this? What are your opinions on this? Because for me, it's, it's about opinions, but if you can also get consensus, I think it, it helps a lot, right? Because there's not just one way to do something, even when you're teaching it. But if you can find the, the best practices and the best patterns and the, the best ways, but you can't do that in, in isolation. You need a community. So I've been really focused on the Go community. I love all everything about the Go community and the, and the developers and the engineers that are all part of that. And I try to give back as much of my time uh, to the community as well. So I'm out there also teaching for free and we're all around the world kind of helping and mentoring and all of that. I, I think that's really helped us solidify. Because look, how many times you get a company that's out there, even on stage, selling selling their, like developers know if you're marketing or you're being sincere in terms of, I wanna teach you this. So I've made it a point at Arden to make sure that it's, it's what we're doing first is for people. And yeah, we're from Arden. And if you wanna reward that, great. If not, it's okay. It's all good because we're gonna put you first every time. And what are you hearing from that community of developers about the challenges they face? I'm seeing a couple of challenges that are that are happening. When we talk about software development, I think the best practices are still kind of loosely out there in terms of development teams. Um, 
So that creates a lot of inconsistency in code bases. And as soon as you have inconsistency in a code base, a code base is about to, at some point, stall out and fall. So a lot of my training is about getting an engineering team together to be rowing the boat in the same direction. Or at least, if we're not sure about something, having the right engineering conversation. The right engineering conversation is about choices. It's about, I don't, I don't agree with the cost you're taking for the benefit, right? The worst engineering conversation is, I don't like what you're saying. Like, th there's no value in that. It's, it's all about cost, right? And everything in life is about cost, right? You gotta teach our kids this all the time. There is no choice you make that doesn't come with a consequence. Maybe it's small, maybe it's large, but if you don't understand the cost, then how can you make this choice? So it, it, it flows into the engineering. So I think that's been lost a lot on engineers. Some of it has to do with the tech they're using. When you're looking at languages that run under an interpreter or a virtual machine, a lot of the idea of this, this decision and this cost gets lost. I think one of the beautiful things about Go is that the machine is its model. So every choice you make does affect the machine and therefore almost directly affects the performance of what you're doing. And I just think Go is allowing engineers to be engineers again. And what about the serverless movement? Do you see it as a fad or something more? This word drives me crazy. Crazy, right? Because it's it's one of these buzzwords that I don't think people have a good. So what kills me is when I start hearing the word serverless with functions running in the cloud. I'm like, God, serverless is so much more than that. I think we had a year where everybody thought they could just run functions in the cloud and they could build app. I think people are starting to realize the latency costs of this, right? Latency is death as it relates to performance. It, it, it comes into microservices. As soon as you got to wait on the network, you're already a million, you're already a, a millisecond and you're already 12 million instructions lost. Like, like, and I think people are starting to see that. For me, serverless isn't about just running a function. I, I, I think it's about not having to think about the hardware anymore or where it's located or how it's configured. That to me is serverless. And I think that's where we're at with cloud. And I love it. I don't want to do ops. I really don't. I love the, the Google, I mean, I, I work a lot on the GCP, the Google Cloud Provider stuff. I love walking into a terminal and saying, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this much computing. I don't care where it is, go run my stuff. I think serverless there, I think it's going to save us at the end of the day. I think Kubernetes eventually will save us. It's going to save a lot of mistakes. It's going to give us the computing power. Um, so I think that's here to say. I just think as an industry, we have to be very, very clear what this word means. And functions as a service is just one part of a very large you know, machine that we can leverage um, in this cloud environment. Thanks so much for your insights today. Thank you. Appreciate it.